Okay, so I'm about to introduce to you something that's it's a very, very important relationship, but it's an equation that you will never use. So it's simply called the theta beta Mach relation. And all it is is it's simply saying, how do I find my deflection angle, theta, in terms of things I know, my shock angle maybe, and the initial Mach number? And it's the equation is super long. I'm never going to make you use it, but the relationship is still very vitally important. So tan of theta is equal to 2 cotangent of beta times m1 squared sine squared beta minus 1 over m1 squared times gamma plus cosine of 2 beta plus 2. There we go. You will never use this equation, and even if you plug it into a calculator, it is multi-valued, so there's not a single answer. So like if you're trying to solve for the shock angle specifically, it's multi-valued. You can actually get two different solutions to it. There's no table for it either, so you're lost in that regard. So like all is lost, you can't really use a calculator for it. You can't, I mean, you can use a calculator for it. You just, there's two values you'll get. So what do you do? You go to this big diagram on the left, or on the right right here. This guy is incredibly important. So this is your theta beta Mach diagram, okay? And this guy right here is incredibly useful, okay? You need to know how to read it. Now, there is a ton of information that is given here, and I'm gonna do my best to try to show it all to you, okay? Do my best to show it all to you. As a note, if it seems like it's clipped, it's because it is. There's actually like two of these. If you go in your textbook, you can actually see like both of it. Um, so I'm only going to do it until the points I can see right here. We'll talk about everything I can see. So first off, I need to know like you know some information. So in this case, I'm going to pick a Mach number of two. Okay, I'm going to say I have a Mach number of two. If I do that, what I usually do is I get some sort of you know software that I can draw on. I take this picture and I begin tracing. So Mach number of two. The Mach numbers are right here. All those are the Mach numbers. Actually, let me do that differently. Let's do right here. Okay. So these are the Mach numbers, like 1.9, 2.0, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, all along the way. And so each of the lines that they're attached to is that line. Okay, that's the relationship between theta, beta, and Mach. So I'm making this a bit bigger here. Let's go into a slightly larger font. I'm going to trace the Mach 2 line. There we go. So that is my Mach 2.0 line. The second thing is I'm trying to either, if I know my Mach number, I'm now looking to find either my shock angle or my deflection angle. So deflection angle is at the bottom right here, and shock angle is right here. So for both of those. But you might realize is my shock angle is multi-valued. Okay, this is a multi-valued function. There is a strong solution, which is up here. And there is also a weak solution, which is down here. And weak is always the winner in real life, in almost every single case, um, because the easiest solution, which is the weak solution for the flow, is what's going to happen most of the time. So unless a problem specifically st states this is a strong oblique shock, you will always use the weak solution. And in real life, it will almost always, except for in some strange, crazy circumstances, be the weak solution. So you're always going to be below this halfway point. The halfway point is shown by this line right here. Actually, I went to the wrong line. That's okay. I'll just deal with it anyway. Oh, no, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to erase that. There's an undo button. There we go. It's shown by the line for right here. There we go. That's the halfway point between the weak and the shocks. Cool? Okay, so if I want to find my shock angle, I would have to know my Mach number and my deflection angle. I would have to know both of those things. And so let's say that I have a deflection angle of 16 degrees. If I do, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go to 16 degrees, which is at the bottom, right there. I'm going to draw a line straight up as best I can. I do strongly suggest that you 
use some sort of either print this out and put a, like a projector sheet on it so you can write on it yourself you gotta have something that you can use to do this because it's otherwise it makes it really difficult and when I do that when I hit that line I go over and so in this case it would be 47 degrees okay so beta would be equal to 47 degrees and that is beta weak I'll draw it in black what am I doing here And that is for a deflection angle of 16 degrees. Now let's find beta strong. So if I kept going up until I hit the other side, I could figure out what beta strong is, and it will be somewhere around here, which is like eh, 78 degrees, roughly. Round about 78 degrees. So your strong shock angle is always higher than your weak shock angle, okay? That is important to remember. And so you're going to be looking at this a lot. You're going to have to use it a lot to calculate things. So I strongly suggest that you get familiar with it. You print it off. If you have a tablet that you can draw on, download it and save it in a big, high-resolution format so you can come back and look at it and be able to solve all of those. Okay. So the last little details I want to talk about here is this point right here. I'll put it in red rather than black. So this point. You see that there's like a front edge, okay? There is a front edge for both of those. All those guys have a front edge. And that is very, very important. Okay, so I'll tell you what this means after I do some erasing because I've got a little bit too much drawing here. I don't want to get you confused with how much I've drawn on it. So let's talk about that front edge after I have some fun erasing here. Okay. So right here. Now, that front edge has a very particular meaning. And what does it mean? Well, the answer is this. If I have a cone going through space, it will have a shock wave attached to it, okay? And what you might realize is that you know, my deflection angle in this case is equal to half the cone wedge angle, you know, half. As I get to wider and wider angles, my shock wave has to move the flow more and more. I'll get a stronger and stronger shock. But there is a point, however, where if I have a very, very wide shock, it will no longer stay attached. So this is what's called detachment, okay? So detachment is important because beyond that point, I'm no longer an oblique shock. This is now a normal shock for all intents and purposes, okay? This is still oblique. So where does it happen? Well, it depends on your Mach number. So if I have a Mach number of two, I just have to go down to the go to the tip right here, and I go straight down. And whatever that angle is, that is where I'm going to have detachment. Okay, that is the detachment angle for that particular Mach number. So as the Mach number gets higher, my detachment angle gets higher as well. But not to infinite. Like I don't ever get to like it will stay attached till 90 degrees. That doesn't happen. But my detachment angle increases and my Mach number increases. And it decreases and my Mach number decreases. Because there's more pressure gradients trying to hold it onto that surface. Another thing you can see is that when I reach that detachment angle, my strong shock and weak shock solutions have converged. So they're no longer different. So when theta equals attachment angle, beta weak is equal to beta strong. There's only one solution. Okay, attachment angle is incredibly important, the weakens, you know, um, but we won't deal with it too terribly much here. Let's see, is there anything else here that I need to talk about? Not really. Yeah. 
And as a note, it doesn't have to be like a wedge going through space. That's, you can think of that more as a um, like a plane moving through space. Even in a wind tunnel, if I change the angles too much, I will also have the same exact thing happen. So for a wind tunnel, my deflection angle is simply whatever the angle is that I turned it. That's the deflection angle. And so I can have an attached shock right here. But if my deflection angle is too high, then I will have a detached shock. Okay. So I have to be careful about that, even in how I design, you know, a compressor, a wind tunnel, um, whatever it is. Okay. Any questions? Cool, cool.